Down and Dirty, I'm Larry. Today we are going to install some DCS rock lights on the JL. Uh, pretty nice setup here. All the wiring, most of the wiring anyway, runs through the frame rail. Uh, the lights plug into uh, existing holes in the frame and in the body. And uh, pretty easy installation. Uh, the only real wiring you have to do is basically under the hood for uh, your switch and connect it to your battery. It's, uh, all the connections are watertight. All right, let's get started. Doing the unboxing of the DCS rock lights for the JL. See, made in the USA, not made in China Jump. High quality. In this package, zip size, instructions, and a lot of stickers, business cards. Oh, came with a hole. Okay, looks like we have wires in here. And lights. So this is everything that comes in the box. Get 11 lights. This one is magnetic. Steel table here. Hear that? Magnet. This one has a, uh, a hole in it. You have to put a bolt through it. I believe that goes under the radiator. This one I believe is the rear drain hole in the back where the jack is. Um, all these are made to go into the frame. You see they have uh, they're molded uh, rubber or soft material and they have a lip on them. So every one of them is designed to have little tabs on them. All of, them. all of these are designed to go into existing holes in the frame rails except for, of course, the magnet one. Uh, but all these, they're all, they're all made the same way. And it uh, looks like this is gonna be the underhood wiring harness. We have a fuse built into this uh, that harness there. And we have a right and left frame rail harness. This is really awesome, I, I, like, I like it. Right off. I really like it. It's nice design. Waterproof plugs on all the connections. There's no wiring to be done. Time to get them installed. Okay, instructions say the items that we need. Wire stripper crimpers, 10 millimeter wrench, some electrical tape, and some form of uh, fish tape or a way to pull the wire through the frame rails. Okay, so we're on the passenger side of the vehicle underneath of the Jeep. And this is the hole that we're going to need to locate. This is where our wires are going to exit the frame because they're going to run along inside of the frame from here. And now we'll go back to the rear and show you where they exit the frame on the rear. And we're going to use a fish tape to pull the wires through this part of the frame. Okay, this is where the wires are going to come out of the frame rail on the rear. This lower control arm here. This hole right here above the lower control arm is where we're going to need the fish tape to go from this hole to the other hole to pull the wires the front to the rear of the vehicle. So we need to get a fish tape fed up through here. Okay, we're going to start feeding the fish tape up through this hole in the rear of the frame above the uh, rear control arm. There's about 100 different things to get caught on up here in the frame, so got to kind of work at it. Nice thing nice is these uh, bolts holding up the skid under the fuel tank. Oh, as soon as we get caught on the boat. Okay, I've got the fish tape down here. This must be a little easier if you got two people, but. Okay, there it is. Pulled through the hole. 
I've got a set of these. Um, I actually got another smaller set that I bought at Harbor Freight. It has little plastic handles on them. This one has a hook. You'll get one that's kind of straight. The one's 90 degree. Um, very helpful for this kind of stuff. That's how I hooked it, pulled it through the hole. Now we'll need to get the wires hooked up to that and electrical tape them on. I'm doing uh, harness B, passenger side. This is harness B, and then it's labeled rear. So these wires need to go to the rear. So we're going to hook it to the fish tape and pull it to the back of the frame. Now we want to pull these through, but we want to put them on like this instead of both plugs together, because both plugs together you have to have that much space to get through. If you do it this way, you need that much space to get through. And with all the bolts and everything you're going to catch on in the frame, we want to go this direction. So typically you'll take a wire and you want to hook it into your fish tape, like so. And then we'll tape this. We tape that up first, we're hooked onto our fish tape. Now we want to tape the back. Keep everything together as tight, close as possible while you're doing this. Because the larger or the wider you make this thing, the harder it's going to be to pull through. Whenever I tear off my electrical tape, something like this, I always take this end and just twist it, roll it up so it can't stick to anything. Makes it easier to get it off and get to the other end. Well, then, so you don't have to try to find that end all over again to get the tape off. Typically, you don't want to cut something like that with a knife because you may end up cutting your wires. Okay, so we dropped it in the hole. Now we can go to the back and pull on the fish tape and pull it through. Okay, so I've already run into a pretty big stumbling block here. We have these two bolts. Actually, there's three. Go to the transmission cross member. My fish tape went under them, obviously, because it just followed the bottom of the frame. And I cannot get the plugs to go past. Come on the opposite side of the frame where the instructions show that your wires come out up front here on the passenger side. The problem I had was my fish tape went underneath. These two bolts which are actually tubes welded all the way through the frame that hold the transmission cross member. Well, I could not get the plugs to pull to the rear underneath of both of these, or even the first one. It kept getting stuck. I tried wiggling, I tried everything. Nothing worked. So my attempt now is I'm gonna shove the fish tape through this way to the rear because the hole that we were first working with is directly, almost directly across from this one. It's kind of angle forward a little bit. Anyway, I can pull the wires through this hole and then I can stick them across. We can pull them right across using a piece of wire if we need to, but I know going this way, it's going to be harder, maybe, to get the fish tape out that hole in the back. Let's see, it may not be. So it goes when I get it back there. Okay, we've got the tape to the back. I'm going to go back there and see if we can get it fished through that hole that we need to be in. Okay, this is far easier actually I think going in this direction with the fish tape itself it's easier feeding it through as you can see right here we're coming out of this hole where we're supposed to right above the uh, passenger lower rear control arm so I'm going to pull this out to get access to it okay so I'm pulling the opposite end of this wire tag that said rear and B B is a passenger it needs to stay on the floor out of our way and the connector red and yellow end on it here that goes to the front plugs into the main harness is what we're going to be putting on our fish tape so we loop our wire around the hook on the fish tape and then wrap that with electrical tape It's kind of the bad thing about this JL frame, at least on the passenger side, I don't think the uh, driver's going to be as bad. You have bolts going up through the frame rail that hold up the gas tank. It's actually a gas tank skid plate, but they hold up the gas tank as well. Getting across those was really hard with the fish tape on the opposite direction. Going this direction, it didn't seem as near as bad. Now I'm taping up the hook part of my fish tape try to make it more of a ramp so it's less likely to get caught on its way back. So another thing, 
we're going to be pulling these this way. So we shouldn't hopefully get caught on these. I don't know. I think I'm going to tape them though. In case they do get hung up, we have to do a reverse pull to get them unhung. I don't want these getting wrapped around anything up inside of there. Actually, I think I'm going to tape one forward and one backwards like we did originally up front. So, you only have the one connector that has to, to slip by at a time. Kind of the same way that we originally taped up the front. Don't tape them both together because that's just that much wider. Okay, now we're going to feed this up through the hole. Okay, here we go. Typically I'll take something like this. I won't go pull on the fish tape until the fish tape is actually back in the hole. Push it through with my fingers first. And then pull on it. We got it past. A little bit of finagling. So I got these next two plugs I'm to get past. Same situation probably. Gets in the way. Or what have you. Well, the plug for the front has already made it through the frame. Yeah, like I said, we already had, this is the front plug. It made it through the hole. So I'm gonna pull on the cable here, and there we go. There's our other two that we taped up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed across the frame to the hole that uh, was originally going to pull from. I wouldn't fish your fish tape or your snake from the hole on the inside of the frame. Smaller hole, it's harder, it's easier to go from this side and then you just take your plug and I can stick it straight across to the other side and pull it right through. That has definitely proven to be easier so far. Okay, now we're supposed to fish the wire out of this hole. It says use your finger. Pull the wire up out of the hole. Alright, there's the wire. So we're supposed to put a round light in this hole. Right here we've got a round light. It says mid. We have two mid lights. One goes in the round hole, one goes in the hole up there by where we pulled the, the wire through. So I'm going to plug this in. Nice connectors, I like those. Then I'm gonna take one of my tricks that I do on a lot of things, when you have to do something like this. I just use Windex most of the time, and just spray this down, spray down your opening, and then shove it through. And it makes it a lot easier, a less, lot less friction. It is popped right in there. All right, so the next light to install is this is the front frame rail. Past your side. Now here's your wheel well. Lower control arm right below it. But we need to put a round light in this hole. In this opening. It's just right behind your shop. So I've rotated the tire out of the way. So what you gotta do now is you gotta get the wire fed from this hole back to that oval opening that I just pulled those two connections through. So we're gonna have to stick another wire up through here or something to pull this through with. And what I have, what I'm gonna to try to do here is I got an old metal coat hanger that I use for these type of things. So rather than trying to deal with that fish tape on this, see if I can get this coat hanger aimed right up through this hole. I'm feeding it from that oval hole in the back. There we go. Wire for this round light onto here. This is actually a really easy pull. Large part of the frame here, so 
not worry about getting caught on a lot of things. I'm gonna do a simple tape job. And feed the wire back through this uh, round hole. And then we're gonna stick this light in this hole. It's not exactly round. It's this sort of oval too. Definitely is not round, but it sprays down good again with Windex. Put the frame. Make it slippery. Or whatever you want to use. I just tend to use Windex on a lot of the stuff like this. So then you gotta work your light in. Don't push on it in the center. Actually, I'm gonna go the other way. Top first. Get parts I can't see away from first. And there we go. Got our light installed. Okay, now we're back up to the hole. This is the one that I originally pushed the fish tape through to go to the back. Remember we did it that way instead of back to front. So this is that same hole. These are the same two connectors that came from up there. Here's my coat hanger. Coming through the same hole with the connector for the front light. So you'll plug your light in your connector. See it's got a locking, locking uh, connection on the one side. You want to make sure that, that locks in so your connector doesn't push apart. So that front light is done. Now we need to insert, there's a light that goes right in this hole. Put everything down again. Spare light. Plug in our connector. Definitely don't forget your connectors. That'd be a little rough. Get all done, you know, light don't light up. You're gonna pull it back out. Definitely looks like you can pull these back out if you need to. Probably wouldn't want to have to try. But I think it would come out okay if you needed to. Okay. Where's that light? Okay, now for our rear light. So it goes in this opening right here. This is a cross member that weld is welded in. From frame rail to frame rail and it's uh, basically an open tube all the way across. And this is going to be fine if you haven't installed, uh, there's aftermarket sway bars I know that go through that tube. So if you haven't installed one of those sway bars you'll be okay. Or if you decide to install one of those sway bars you're going to have to somehow find a way to relocate this light. I already sprayed this with Windex. Should go right in. This is one of the few lights that has an external wire on it. It doesn't go inside the frame. So you plug it into one of the connectors down here at the rear part of the frame. So you plug that light into, you got two plugs right here that are out of this hole in the rear part of the frame that we ran that fish tape through. And we'll have to get this zip tied up. Um, zip tied up to our brake line here that runs right up through here. Then we got another connector here yet for another light. We'll get everything ran before we start zip tying anything. Okay, now we're at the rear of the Jeep inside. Um, I'm gonna pull this cover off. Normally your jack handle and everything is down inside of there. I just removed all of it. But if you see this plug right here, this needs to be removed. That's a drain hole plug and it needs to be popped out. You push it up from underneath and we have a light that goes in that spot. Okay, I just popped the plastic drain plug out. This light gets installed from inside. So you stick your wire down through the hole, the opening, that you just took drain plug out of, and you'll see this wire on the light, because the light is on the bottom. The wire is going to be on the outside of the vehicle. This is replacing the drain plug. So when you stick it through, you want to stick it through when you stick it through, you want to stick it down through at an angle so your wire goes down underneath the floor and then just pop this into place. We're going to spray this down. Spray the hole. I'm going to put it in with a wire pointing to the passenger side because this is plugging into that passenger side harness. That extra connector that we had for the one that we just popped into the rear frame rail. So we'll stick it down in there and just push it down in. Basically, it just replaces one of your drain plugs. So now we put our jack and our cover back in. Okay, here's our light. You can follow our wire. 
ran it all the way down around. So it goes up, it's just following that other one. We come out here on the other side of the right there's that muffler bracket. Pull it to the frame. Come all the way down to here to the spring perch. I crossed over the frame to the other side. And then it came out. That's where I crossed over the frame. This is where the other light was. That's in the side of the frame. It went down. There's our connectors. I've got them zip tied to the brake line right up at the bracket. Okay, we're on the driver's side. This side looks like it's gonna go a lot easier. There's almost hardly anything in our way. There we go. Fish tapes through already. Oh, it's quick. But here again, I'm gonna pull it. It's just easier to get the fish tape through. It's easier to get all the wire through. Notice it says rear. A, it's driver's side. the hole. The other side went. Passenger side is definitely the hard side. There's a lot in the way. There's no doubt. It's tough. And we got the plug out the back already. Here our plugs pulled through our holes here. Get our uh, plug installed here on the round hole under the back door. And plugged in or installed first. It's kind of easiest wiring wise. Okay, so right now we're on the getting ready to do the, the round one under the passenger door on the driver's side. We have two connectors here. One of them is for this the magnetic light. But the magnetic light goes under the center of the body, so you need to feed the wire to the magnetic light through a hole in the frame inside to the outside so we can plug it in. And then we can push all our wires back in. And then we'll uh, spray down our light and install it. Okay, so right here's our magnetic light. We'll zip tied the wire up to this cross member. That's your magnetic light right there. Sticks right on. We ran the wires like we just showed over through the frame rail there to the mid light under the rear door. Pulling the wire back and forth. It's kind of the hardest one I think it is to get through the hole with your fingers. So I do this one first. And then we'll go up front. We gotta do that front one next, up by the front tire. There we go. And here again on this one, I'm just using a coat hanger. With my coat hanger. So we just do a quick easy tape dab on this one because they don't go very far. I'm not really afraid of pulling it off. Spray them up. Pop it right in the hole. Okay, so here's our wires. Here's the one from the front that we just put in. Put that dude in. Make sure it's locked in. And here's our side one. It goes in this hole. Ooh, forgot. I gotta send this across real quick. To the other hole. Okay. Now oh, that won't be on our way to fit this in the hole. So get this dude plugged together until it clicks. Shove all the wires back in the hole. Spray it. Pop it in. 
Just like that, all right. So we still got the rear one on this side. Putting our light in this opening in the frame. Again, like the other side. Got the light here. I got the lights plugged into the harness, so. I did that and that's something you wanna watch. The single plug, especially on this side, to the, in this frame hole here, start pulling forward, you'll pull that plug right into the frame rail. Now we start over. So I plugged this light into it and just laid it on top of the axle. So I got to this point. I guess I could have installed it at that point. But I just laid it back. I guess it's plugged in. Put pull up plug up inside the frame. And I'd be like, oh yeah, now I got to get it pulled back out of the frame. So all right. So that's it for all these lights. So we still have the one under the radiator. We'll get this all zip tied up. Okay, here's where they were saying you need the 10 millimeter, but I'm gonna do a wrench, do a ratchet. So you got the one rock light goes here. It had that hole in it, bolting it on. This light goes here. All tangled up in all the bars here. Steering, everything else running through here. Okay, this is our wire for the one that bolted up uh, under the radiator. Stuck it up, got it hanging up over the frame. Yeah, I think I'll be able to see it down through there. But I'm gonna fish down through here with my uh, coat hanger and we're gonna pull it up through. Okay, so I got the coat hanger stuck down from up above behind the inner fender. Wire's taped onto it. And right here. So there we go. So I've got my wire pulled up. This is the one from under the radiator. See where I ran it? Right upside here by the air cleaner. About the easiest place to get through. And then where we're going to tuck it, see where that wire right there is? Up in front of the uh, opening, the air cleaner here. That's a cable for my winch that I ran. I'm going to run it up underneath there, bring it out the other side. We've got our batteries right here. This is where we're going to have our final connections, all that. All right, that's going to be hard to see too. But here's your fuse, box, battery, fender, firewall. How well you can see down through that. I don't know if you can see that little bit of light. I'll try to circle it. That's a flashlight that's on down there. The inner fender right next to the frame. I'm going to be sticking my coat hanger down towards that light and hooking on to our wire to bring it up. So right here you can see, there's my flashlight. I got the end light that's on pointing up. There's a rock light that we put in the frame. There's my coat hanger hanging down on the right. On the left is our wire. So you just stick it down right in that corner next to the fuse box. And uh, we'll tape the wire onto the coat hanger here and pull him up. This wire pulled up through here. The hardest part's getting that connector to go through the openings. But there we are. Got this wire pulled up. I'm gonna still get the driver's side up here yet. Okay, so here's our under the hood connection cable. This is gonna go over to the driver's side. These two for the passenger side. And then for our battery connections. And we're right here by the battery and also by the wires for my auxiliary switches because I am going to connect this to one of the auxiliaries. So 
So anyway, right here's one of ours. This is actually for the whole passenger side. Here's the one that, uh, here's the one that went under the radiator in the middle. Okay, we're on the driver's side. It's a brake reservoir, brake booster. Here's the uh, battery portion of the wires that are ran to this side. Here's our connector for the driver's side. So right there, we've got the driver's side plugged in. And uh, he's my coat hanger again. I pulled these wires up behind the uh, radiator overflow. And I just ran it up here. Still got a zip tie the other side, but that's it right there. I'm gonna zip tie it up with these wires that I've already previously ran through here earlier for my E-Adjust Falcon shocks. So I'm kind of following the same path. So I kind of already had an idea where I could run wire, what the easiest routes were going to be from installing those shocks. So, Alright, now we're going to do the final wire connections. We'll run this to an auxiliary switch, which I have. And this one with the pink stripe goes to my auxiliary number four. An insulated connector right now. Probably come back later and take this out and solder it. Much rather have a solder connection, but... Get this wrapped up. All right, so we're hooked to our auxiliary switch four, and now we've got to do a ground. They're nice enough, they have an extra ground stud right here. It's actually another one a little further out, only has one thing on it. I'm going to crimp on a blue eye connector. And wiring is all done. I got to remember how to go to uh, enable my auxiliary switch though. All done. Get our switch program in. Test them out. Okay, we're gonna set our auxiliary switch number four. It's the one that I chose, and we're gonna get it set up now. Uh, I've got key on position. I'm gonna go to apps. Scroll over settings. Scroll down. Oops, went past it. Scrolling too fast. Scroll down to auxiliary switches. Go to number four. We're going to make it latching. Ignition. Recall last date. So it looks like it's already set. That's how you do that if yours does not work. Okay, here's our DCS rock lights. I think they got the uh, ground lit up very well underneath the JL. See our lights in our wheel wells. Got two here on the side of the frame on each side. One that's underneath uh, lines up with the rear doors. One in the front underneath the radiator. Then we have another one underneath where the 
jack storage is in the back. Point straight down. Well, it's not completely dark out yet, but it's pretty close. So, very happy with them. That's what I needed. A wheel at night. Be able to see around the vehicle when you're getting through rocks or anything else. All right, that concludes this video of the installation of the DCS Rock Light Kit. I think it went very well. I had a little bit of difficulty on the faster frame rail. A lot of obstacles to get around with the fish tape and then trying to get the, the wire through with the plug connectors on it was a little difficult. But we got it. That was the first part. Uh, other than that, it's a very easy installation. I love the uh, plug and play, waterproof connectors. Most of the lights go into existing holes in the frame rails, so it makes a very easy installation. Um, got a magnetic one, one that bolts on under the radiator, and the one that goes in the drain plug in the rear. Very easy installation. It went very well. Hooked it up to my auxiliary switch 4 on my JL. Love it. I do have affiliation with DCS Lighting. I did get a discount on this light set. I also have a discount code to offer to all of you. I'll put it down in the comments. Um, as long as it's active, it'll be in the comments and also a link to dcslighting.com where you go to purchase the products. They make uh, lights kits just like this for uh, JL, JK, and the TJ and LJ. And also individual lights. They have lights that uh, clamp onto two chassis. All right, like, subscribe, share. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate y'all.